there's so many things that can go wrong. And if you buy a property right, the money that you put into it potentially could be lost and the market could change. Listen, you're gonna take some hits along the way, right? Like I always think that you learn the most from your losses. So I'm glad that, to be the first one to admit it, but yes, I've had several. Welcome to the Millionaire Mentorship Podcast. Today, we've got a very special guest, one of the most respected tax lien specialists in the United States. And uh, he does deeds, he does liens, he does all of the tax strategies. Ted, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yes, I actually took a tax course and I bought several tax liens. And so I'm really excited to talk to you and hear about how you got started and what you invest in. I know there's different states, there's different liens, there's different ways to do this. Right. Break down about um, how you got your start, Ted. Well, actually, I came from being a pilot. My first career was as an airline pilot, right? And then uh, when I uh, finished the flying career, I decided to get in real estate and I got involved in, first I got involved in big apartment properties. Then I went into real estate foreclosures. And then from foreclosures, I learned, wait a minute, they got this business where you can buy property for 20 or 30 cents on the dollar. I said, how could that be? It's impossible, right? And so once I started getting into it, and reading about it, well, then I said, wait a minute, I can buy in every state in the United States for somewhere between 20 and 30 cents on the dollar. Why would I pay retail and go through all that business when I could be buying these properties? So that started me on a search and the search just has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger over these last years. And so I've been doing this for quite some time. How long is quite some time, Ted? 30 years. 30 years. So you were an airline pilot. Were you working for like a commercial airline? Sure. I flew for Aloha Airlines in Honolulu, Hawaii. Someone had to do it. It was me. <laughs> now, where are you based at? You look like... I used, to, I, used to have black, I used to have black hair and it was nice and thick and I was skinny. <laughs> now look. Oh, my God. Well, you know, you still look good, Ted. That's uh, like the I, right thing to say. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, <laughs> You work for the airline. Now, where do you where do you currently re reside right now? I'm currently in a place called Melbourne, Florida, which is east of Orlando, right okay. in the middle part of the state. And right up the street is an island called Merritt Island. I lived there the last 25 years. I just moved over here to Melbourne a short time ago. I live right on the water. It's a very pleasant place to live. Nice temperature. Conservative government. Everything works. Yeah, we we're actually in the process, uh, Ted, of building our property in Naples um, on the other oh, side nice. of the water there. So, yeah, we're definitely uh, with you. Know, you we have working people over here. Those are all rich people over there. We're just we're just working folks over here. Yeah, I'm I'm just a working guy. I just wanted to buy a nice big house out there. So yeah, and a, a five thousand foot house and it costs ten million dollars, twenty million dollars. <laughs> it it can be expensive out there for sure. Yeah, it is. Oh, nothing's yeah, no, nothing's cheap in Naples. That's that's no, no joke. Boy, that's for sure. Yeah. So absolutely. can you break down the types of because you know one thing that I found interesting when I first started looking into tax liens is that each state has a different way of selling um, or each county and each state has a different way of selling their tax liens. And can you break down what you're buying when you actually get a tax deed, tax lien? And can you break down the differences between them? Sure. I'll even take you back and give you the history. The reason the states are different is they came into the union at a different time. This business has been around for 200 years. It's been around since the days of the pilgrims. And so they had one set of rules then and then each time they took over another part of the country, you know, stole it from the Indians and they get, took it from the Mexicans or whatever. When they did that, each one of those states developed a new and better rule. And that's why it's so confusing. If you learn in New York, then it might be a lot different than California, a lot different than Texas. But let's break it down. So in the United States, there's over 3,000 counties. Those counties are allowed to do something if someone doesn't pay their tax. So all the money that comes into the county, basically it comes in from property tax. And that's what pays for the firefighters and the police department, the county employees, fix the roads and all that kind of thing. So if someone doesn't pay their tax, big problem. County can't pay the employees, can't pay the firefighters. So what they do, half of the counties in the United States are very benevolent. And in Florida, they're benevolent. And what they do is they issue a tax lien certificate. Do you, what do you mean by benevolent? What do you, what do you, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll demonstrate it. Okay. I mean benevolent because they don't come and confiscate the property. So if you don't pay your property tax in all counties in the United States, if you don't pay your property tax, they can confiscate your property, push you off the property and sell it for the back taxes. That's the law in every county in the United States. But half of the counties are benevolent. They're really nice about it. They say, look, we're going to issue a tax lien certificate, nothing more than a piece of paper like I'm holding up right now. 
just a piece of paper like that. That's all it is. So that piece of paper represents your receipt when you buy a certificate. So what is a tax certificate? That means I just paid the taxes on your house in Naples because you had some difficulty. The roof was leaking and there was a hurricane and some disaster. and You weren't able to pay your tax. So I paid them. Anybody could pay your taxes. They advertise them in the newspaper. And the newspapers are huge newspapers that there are thousands and thousands of tax liens are, are issued in all the United States. So there's a newspaper from Tampa, Florida. Okay, this has got over 3,000 tax, tax lien certificates in it. Over 30,000 tax I said 30,000 tax lien certificates. In it. And they're going to sell those so the county has money to pay their bills. So half of, the, half of the counties do that. The rest of the counties are not so benevolent. They slap your hand. They say, you didn't pay your tax. They confiscate the property. They resell it at an auction with a starting bid of just the back taxes. So you probably went to those auctions and bought one of those tax defaulted property. So that's so when you're talking about the ones who are benevolent, they're selling a tax lien, and the ones who are not are selling a tax deed. Is that correct? Perfect. And the easy way to understand it, a tax lien is nothing more than a piece of paper. A tax defaulted property is a property. Great. And so as as somebody who wants to invest in in tax deeds, tax liens or properties in general, do you go after all of them or do you go after a specific sect or do you like, do you prefer deeds over uh, liens or, and I know there's also another hybrid. I don't know what Vegas is, but um, I know once you own a property in Vegas or Nevada, once you're behind on that property, they actually put it into the treasurer's name and then they don't sell it for quite a while. So I don't know what their whole mechanism is. Okay. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, what, what I do and what my students do, okay? So I want to buy, I want to buy the biggest house I can find, I want to buy at the tax auction. Why? Because there's not going to be so many bidders. Right. So most of the, most of the bidders want to buy a property for 10000 20000 or 50000 I'm willing to pay a quarter million dollars or more for a house because I'm like you are, I'm an investor. So let's say the house is worth 600000 I would be glad to pay 40 cents on the dollar for that property Absolutely. because I've got so much margin. So that would be you or I. We want to do that, but but the little guy that wants to learn how to do it, there's lots of houses that are, are two hundred thousand, and you can maybe get that house for thirty or forty thousand dollars, paint it, clean it, do whatever, be in it uh, uh, something more than that, but have some margin, not the margin you and I are going to make, but a nice margin. And so there's over two million of those every year available. Two million, for example, let me hold you up a list. Hold you up a list. So in California, one county everybody knows is Los Angeles County. This is the auction list for Los Angeles County. Now, it doesn't look like much when I hold it up like that, but let me do this with it. That's a lot of pages there. Yeah, 2,000 properties every time they hold the auction. 2,000 properties. So when you go to that auction, you're going to have to brief yourself for a number of days, and they're going to have everything from 25 and $50 million properties all the way down to something in this maybe 500,000, something like that. So you get the answer. So this, 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 so when someone said, well, what is the business? It's all kinds. If you went to Arkansas, there'd be a lot of two hundred and dollars and $400,000 houses as there would be in Michigan. If you go to Miami, Florida, you're, it's going to be tough to find something under a half a million dollars. If you go to Naples, you're not going to find one. It's not going to happen because the brokers have already said, wait a minute, that house is going for auction. I'll go buy it because the market is so hot. Right. Yeah. So will you break down... Like in Alabama, you've got uh, a long redemption period in, in Miss. Can you break down what redemption period is? Periods yeah, redemption are and how period, they work. Very confusing with redemption. Period. There's only five states that have redemption. There's only five. Okay, that's it. Okay, so the biggest one is Texas with 250 counties. The next biggest one is Georgia. So what happens with redemption is my property goes to auction because I didn't pay the tax. When it goes to auction, you decide. You're going to buy my property. So you buy it. You're the highest bidder at the auction. However, I don't get thrown out of the house. I can stay there for one year in Georgia. I can say if any time during that year, I can say, well, my money finally came in. I can pay you back and give you a 20% penalty. So you earn 20%. In Texas, same situation. Okay, I can get my property back, but only for 180 days, 180 days, and that's it. After the 180 days, you own the property. So it's a redemption state. Those are the two big ones 
There's some smaller ones like Connecticut and whatever. Also uh, Delaware and whatever. But the small, so the redemption states confuse everybody, but it's a dynamite way to make money. Absolute dynamite way to make money because 97% of all property owners will redeem. People don't want to lose a property. Who wants to lose a property? So they're going to redeem it. When they come in to redeem, you get all your money back plus 20 or 25%. What's wrong with that? I mean, some people work all their life and they make 25%. Yeah. Well, think of all the fixer-upper guys that fix property and they barely get out. Oh, I get out of it, right? <laughs> I mean, because they put a big kitchen in and they fix the roof, they don't yeah. make any money. Well, no, what's wrong with you? I've been there. I've done a lot of those where I haven't made no money. And uh, uh, I can tell you, we've got, you know, interesting, another, another, another uh, state for you. And I don't know how much you're going to know about this, but you seem to know everything else I'm talking about. So I'll, I'll throw this one at you. Are you familiar with uh, uh, Louisiana? I'm familiar with all the states, but I'm not going to be an expert. So go ahead with your question. If I know it, I'll tell you. I do. If I don't, I'll tell you. I have databases on every county in the United States. I can sit where you're sitting right now and go like this, and I can access every property in the United States, all 100 million of them, right from where I'm sitting right now and right from where you're sitting. So the interesting thing about Louisiana is it's it's a, a bidding where you don't bid on the property. You actually bid on the lowest percentage. So like you start at 100, but whoever bids the lowest percentage ownership of that property is the one who gets it. So you might own 1% of a property because that's the bid that got it. So a lot of people are just looking for the, the return versus the property. When I when I bid on tax sales, Ted, my the way I was trained by guys who actually, I believe, know what they're doing just like you, but they're, they weren't the most trustworthy people. I can tell you that right now. But they did know they did know what they were talking about. But one thing that they pointed out, which for me made sense, is to bid on vacant properties that are distressed for, to own them versus to get the return. Absolutely. Every auction will have at least land. It'll have about 20 percent of every auction will be land. Most of that land is going to be there's not going to be anybody uh, on that land. And there'll be a lot of lots within subdivisions that are empty. I tell people, buy them right now because you already know all the values all around you instantaneously. And the rest of the market is, the market is trained from old television where they taught people buy foreclosures and fix them up and all that. So I'm the last guy to figure. If someone says fix up a property, look at my hands. I, if you gave me a hammer, I mean, it would be, it would really be a bad thing. Call the police if you see me with a hammer because it's not going to happen. Okay. All right, so you, want to, you don't want to do that work. You do not want to fix up property because it, those guys that fix up property, they work their buns off and they don't always make money. It's true. Sometimes you can't sell them. You can't sell them. So I tell people, if you can get a redeemable property, you're the first guy I've ever had admitted in 30 years of doing this that he couldn't make money on a fixer upper. I know you can. I got so many students. I say, don't fix it. Sell it. Get your cash. Move to the next one. Don't oh, people. Well, there's so many. Th here, the thing is with 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 that, it's like there's so many things that can go wrong. And if you buy a property right, the money that you put into it potentially could be lost, and the market could change. Interest rates could jump up to nine percent, and then all of a sudden, that property that you thought you were going to make fifty thousand dollars on, now you're holding it to a long term rental. I I, I always tell people, you know listen, you're going to take some hits along the way, right? Like you're not, and not everything's going to be, you know, we've had thousands of wins and we've had a couple, we've had, you know, several losses, right? And I always think that you learn the most from your losses. So I'm glad that, to be the first one to admit it. But yes, I've had several. <laughs> yeah, very few people will admit that. But it's, uh, it's, so if you could buy and resell, that's the, that's the magic of the marketplace. And so we spend a lot of time teaching me to people read us how to sell and how to use all different kinds of market marketing and media. If they'll if they'll do that, they'll do quite well. Ted, what's your favorite market that you like to buy in? It's moving all the time. It's um, uh, right now. People really should be looking in places like upstate New York. Now, I didn't say rural New York. Upstate meeting within a hundred miles of New York City, because otherwise, New York is a rural state. I, I'm not too keen on rural states that got big big cities. I'd rather I want to be within a hundred miles of a big city. Because people will commute now, okay? Uh, the market has um, changed so much with all the inflation that it's pushed up a lot of houses that were 50,000 now are selling for 100 and a quarter, 150. So the little guy can, this it couldn't be, be uh, you've heard this a million times, good time for the little guy on the low end. The big, the big properties have, have now been priced out of the market, so to speak. So I like that market in anywhere from 400 
to $800,000. I like. I tell the students, try to like the market somewhere between one fifty and th- and three fifty because you can churn it. You you got to churn it. We're we just we're just property churn. We're not wholesalers or something like that. But we want to buy it, do whatever we can, and move it because we're gonna. The advantage we have is we're gonna buy at the auction because we know what the hell we're doing. That's the advantage. Yeah. That's a, no other competitive advantage than that. We're yeah, not yeah. fixer upper people. We're not fixer. We, up. we bought a bunch of properties that were actually matured tax liens out of Rochester, New York, from a company. Mm-hmm. I wanted to actually segue that to my next question, which would be: There's actually a lot of these big companies that buy these tax returns, these tax deeds, these tax liens for just the return that the county promises them. Sometimes up to eighteen percent, right? And right. then, when, and then that tax lien matures, and they get the property. They don't want nothing to do with it, and so they'll sell those chunks off. Can you explain for people that how do they get a hold of these resellers of properties? Okay, well, two two things there. Uh, one, those big guys have a problem if they end up with the property because they're not in the property business and now they're trying to carry cop- property in their financial business. So they don't know a lot about management, so they want to get rid of it. So uh, you, can, you can find out who are the people doing that at every single county because the county has records of everyone that's buying property. All right. So I've seen, I've been at the auction in West Palm Beach. Okay. West Palm Beach is probably the one of the wealthiest counties in Florida. And now you've got a place where anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 tax lien certificates will come on the market. And unfortunately, the hedge funds, they're just looking for a return on their money. So yeah. they'll buy them. Unfortunately, some of those hedge fund properties are underwater, like called Lake Okeechobee under the water. Those yeah. properties are never going to redeem. What are they going to do with them? Yeah. They're worth these under the water. Okay, so there's a lot of subdivisions across the United States, in New Mexico and Texas and Oklahoma. There are a lot of the property that people have to be careful of. But the, the big hedge funds want to buy in because they got a lot of money. They want to buy in, but they only want cash returns. So they're really what I call the tax lien buyers, like I was showing you a minute ago. So like this is a newspaper from from Jacksonville, Florida, okay? It's got about um, uh, round numbers, 40, 50 pages. Each page has got a little over 100 tax lien certificates. So they'll have, let's say, 30 or 40,000 certificates to sell. You and I, we're going to buy half a dozen. They're going to go in and buy pages of these and never have looked at them. They could be underwater. They could have railroads running through the middle of them. They could be, you know, swampland. They don't care. They're just, they're going on volume. They're going to make the money on the volume and the rest of it, they're just going to wholesale and get rid of. So if you knew, if you could get on their list and you could go and look at those and buy them onesie twosie, you'd be okay. But if you can't buy them onesie twosie, the average guy that you, that I'm going to do business with, average guy I'm doing should buy one, do it, get it sold, buy another one, do it. They shouldn't buy in bulk. The other thing that people need to understand is that the tax lien business is not a fast business. It's actually probably, in my opinion, the slowest but safest investment that you can make in real estate. I always tell people, like, if you want to, if you don't have a lot of money and you've got a lot of time, get in the tax uh, lien business because you could take the time to do the research to find the properties that you can bid on, and then you know if you're willing to wait, you know, a year or so because you also have to do the confirmations, right? Can you right. talk a little bit about the confirmations? Now, tell me what you mean by confirmation. Well, to, to get, so a lot of times in like Mississippi, we have to do a confirmation shoot to make that title go from the person that we bought it from into our name. Okay. So you want to do, you're going to have to do something about clearing the title and that kind of thing. Yeah. Get it, get, get yeah. it basically what, right. what would be called a okay. resellable okay. title. Okay. Okay. So thanks for saying confirmation. I'm glad you did that because what you just said, Mississippi is actually going to be different from Alabama. It's going to be different from Louisiana. So the rule in the tax lien and deed business is know the rules for where you're buying. So if you learned in Georgia, you don't know how to do it in Mississippi. I can tell you that right now. Right. If you learned how to do it in Georgia, you don't know how to do it in New York. So you've got to learn. So you talked about the confirmation. So when you buy a property from the government, the right. government sells one way. And the words are as is. And what that simply means is the government's taking no responsibility for the condition of the property, and the government's taking no responsibility for the condition of the title on the property. So if you bought the property and the title is somehow messed up, in other words, there was somebody using your land that wasn't, someone has an easement across it, someone had another lien on it. If you don't know what all that is, 
Then you're going to have to do, he called it a confirmation. I'm going to call it, you're going to have to get a clear title on that property. So that requires a clear title. And that means you're going to have to get an attorney. So when he said, you're going to have to take your time, and a clear title might take you 90 or 120 days. You have to wait your, till the attorney says, stamp of approval, and put a stamp on it and said, now it's approved. Otherwise, you can't sell it. Yeah, absolutely. And that it gives me another follow-up question for you, Ted, that I don't think a lot of people know is if you own a tax sale, you have the absolutely strongest deed that you can get to wipe out mortgages, to wipe out everything. If you have a tax mm -hmm. lien that went through and it has a mortgage on it, it has all these other judgments, your deed gives you the power to wipe everybody else out. When you buy a tax certificate, it's the first lien on the property. It's the absolute first lien. So the first lien forecloses, it can wipe out every other lien. That includes the IRS. Every lien that you have, but it doesn't include federal liens, but all other liens, it wipes them out. Just takes them right off the property. Federal liens and municipal liens can stay on the property. Okay, so there's a special rules. The local municipality might have a rule that you didn't paint it, you didn't clean the property up, so there'll be a lien on it. That, that lien will stay in place so they can protect local government. Okay, so federal liens on property. The federal government, remember the Republic, the Republic of the United States owns all the land. You don't own it. You have the privilege to stay on the land, sell it, buy it, do anything you want, but you must pay the tax. But the federal, so you can't get rid of a federal lien. The federal lien is there. You can negotiate it. And a super priority lien, right? Like anything that's a super priority lien, which is a newer lien, like the HOAs and stuff have figured out a way to make sure that they're protected because they basically have made themselves a deed restriction that travels with the property, right? Yeah. On some of those things. On the new ones. Yeah, the new ones, all the old ones in Florida get wiped out. Yeah. Florida, they wipe them out. They, 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 they can't put up with it because there's so many HOAs in Florida. I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a big rental market with old people living in condos, right? Yeah. That's what it is. 25% of the market's old people in condos. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's over, probably over 20%. Yeah. So, that's so what Ted, what makes you so passionate about this business? I mean, you you got a lot of passion. you got a no lot of knowledge. Um, you've obviously yeah. been doing this for a long time. you got all these papers yeah. sitting with you. And the yeah. other thing is, we're coming into tax season right now. People don't know, but usually yeah. August, August is where most of these properties will get auctioned off. Yeah. It starts in Florida in May and June. In the month of May... Florida will announce 1 million tax certificates every year in Florida. 1 million is the yeah. amount they're going to sell in Florida. And then it just goes right across the United States. Remembering, tax liens are only sold in half of the counties, but tax deeds, meaning the property, are sold in all of the counties. So tax deeds, you get a property. Tax liens are probably, if you've got a little gray hair like I did, you don't, you don't have anything else going on. Well, those are very conservative. Probably the most conservative investment you could ever buy is a tax lien certificate because it's the first lien on the property. You don't give any money to Ted Thomas. You give your money directly to the government. The government then will give you your money back when they get paid. And 97% or more of the people will redeem it. In other words, people will pay their tax. People don't want to lose their property. I can tell you that. Yeah, that's something that's interesting. So if you're bidding and you're just looking for the interest, you should just do the minimum bid and hope to get the property. If you're bidding for the property, you 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 know what I was taught was bid over the amount and um and go for vacant houses that you don't think that anybody's going to redeem on them and not nice areas. But people always, when they're first bidding on tax sales, I think they fall in love with the property. And be like, oh, if I could get this one, or if I get this 600 acres. Or, yeah. But the thing yeah. that you just mentioned is that 97 percent of the people are going to redeem those properties. So if you're trying to go for a property. How do you go at, what would be your strategy that you'd recommend for somebody, Ted, to get to uh, go after that 3%? Okay, so I want to buy the property. That's what I, I'm in the business of buying the property. Right. So what I'm going to do is all of the tax auctions are going to have an announcement. Like I showed a few minutes ago, this was an announcement for Los Angeles. I wouldn't recommend that you go to that sale except to pay a fee to go there and watch just to see how insane it could be. But most of, uh, of the counties are going to, I just, I just printed this off the internet. So this is a county in upstate New York, and it's called Sullivan County. I happen to know where it is. It's about, it's about uh, two hours from New York City. Now, some two hours from New York City means that's a commute. All right, so sure enough, now when I say commute, people take the train. So at any rate, so this brochure, would open, you could open it up, and you can't see it on, on the screen now, but all the little black dots are really, are really houses, and then it describes it, what it's going to be. So the beauty of a tax auction is 
you have plenty of time to do your homework. So that's what he suggested. If you don't do your due diligence, you're going to be in trouble. You don't ever want to buy a property that you have not walked on the property. You want to do, you want boots on the ground. Why? Because what if it burned down? What if there was a hurricane? What if there was a flood? You don't know because it's a picture they put in a brochure. Don't buy the picture. So walk on the property. Now that you then can decide what do you, does it need a roof? You can tell that. I mean, an amateur can tell it. Does it need paint? An amateur can tell that. All right. If the outside isn't pretty, and let's face it, they're going to be used and abused. So what's the inside going to be like? It's going to be that way or worse. So figure that out. That's not, that's not difficult. And I'll give you a, I'm giving you a 30 second lesson. All right. So sure enough, what most people don't do and you should do is go walk around it. Then look at the comparable values. You can figure out comparables. All right. And then look at the neighborhood. Now, you don't want a good property in a bad neighborhood. You don't want a bad neighborhood. You can change the property. Can't change the neighborhood. All right. That's all you have to know about tax liens and deed. Now, we take about eight weeks to teach you all that. Awesome. <laughs> but that's what you need to know. It's as simple as that. Anybody's been around real estate and say, well, Ted gave you 90% of it in that one minute and a half. So the point is, there's plenty of those that you can go and look at. Now, an auction like this, this one here has got, let me see what the, no, that's Los Angeles. What was the other one? The other one is Sullivan County. I'll tell you how many properties you're going to have. You're going to have 235 properties. That county will have that every single year. Every year they'll have that or more. So you get 200 properties. I mean, you can't look at 200 properties. So pick out the ones you want. They're in your price range. If they're all, if they're all $800,000 houses in the old days, they're selling for back taxes now. Do you want those big things? Well, maybe not. I do. So I'll look at those. You look at the other ones. There's enough for everybody. And there's 3,000 counties. I mean, it's so much abundance. There's no way that you can get, you, you're never going to run out. So yeah. why am I excited about it? That's why I'm excited. There's, there's always another deal. I have people that have never done real estate in their life and they make six figure incomes. I love it. I, even... I, I, I can't agree more. I think that tax sales in general are, if you are a new investor and you want to be safe and you want to learn how to do it and you're not in a rush, I think that tax auctions are the way to go. One, and just don't get caught up in the auction atmosphere. Right. Yeah, just, exactly. don't get, exactly. just don't get caught up in that. And I yeah. think that like you're probably one of the few guys to mention the most important thing is take a look at the property. Cause I can tell you, like I bought stuff that I'm like, Oh, I should have looked at that one. You know, <laughs> like uh, boots no. on the ground is a, is an intentional thing. You've yeah. got to walk. So now all of these auctions are online. So I'm sitting here in an office. I'm sitting in the studio right now in the back of my office. Okay. So this is where I buy the property. I sit right in the same chair to buy the property. But I go to wherever it is, to New York, wherever it is, and I walk on that property. I take a big iPad. You just take a big iPad, taking pictures, and you can write all over the iPad. You can write all, all over the picture. And I just set it up here, and I auction you start. Oh, yeah, I know that property. Yeah, that was the one I walked in the mud up to my ears. Oh, yeah, that was the one that had the burned down house next door. Right. Oh, that's the one that's got the chicken farm. No, 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 I don't want the chicken farm. No, no. You, I mean, you can do all that. And it's a, you're not in a hurry. Just take your time. Just do it, do it when you want to do it. Ted, how do people get a hold of you who are interested in- I was hoping you'd ask that. I was yeah. hoping you'd ask Every two weeks, I do a class. It's a six-hour class. So I get a gift for all you people that want to do it. If they want to go to my class, I usually charge $47 for six hours. Now, if you don't think I can get a lot in six hours, you're dreaming. I start at 11 o'clock in the morning. I go to five in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. You're going to go learn a lot. All right. So it starts, it starts early, goes the whole day. It's a virtual class. You can sit on your rusty dusty, just like you're doing now. You can drink, eat, whatever you want. Talk to your girlfriend, but watch this class. It's usually 47 bucks. My gift to you is it's half price. You just have to put code Troy 50, code Troy 50. That's all you have to do. That's the magic code. And when they- Where do, where do they go and do that? They can go to tedthomas.com. Ted Thomas. Ted, how the heck did you get? I'm, I'm guessing you're past 40 years old. Just just 85 in 60 days. I'm 85. You got so much damn energy. Listen, let me just tell you something right now. Forget about the tax sales. Forget about all that shit. The fact that Ted is out here spitting game at 85 years old is no excuse. If you're listening to this podcast right now or if you're watching this podcast right now, Pay attention to this guy. Number one, he doesn't need glasses when he's reading stuff, which is impressive nonetheless. 
And number two, he's as vibrant as anybody I've ever met at the age of 40 or 50. You got more energy than anybody I've ever met. And what would be, what's your secret to all of that? I just like working. I love the business. Um, I work with a lot of good people. Um, uh, I'm not uh, uh, versed on a lot of things, but I found this business. Uh, we could have, there should be 20 of me because there's so much out there. Some of these bu bu buildings are just going to rot in place because yeah. they don't even get bid on. Yeah. There's properties that don't get bid on. It's like the government has finally changed this last two years. California would always hold their price. They wouldn't go over. Now California is even saying, I know you won't believe me, but this is true. <laughs> I have clients buying in Los Angeles County for six cents on the dollar. Six, not one, two, three, four, five. Because Los Angeles finally said, if we can't get the money, make us a damn offer. Because they couldn't get rid of the properties. People show up, and as I started to tell you about auctions, so if you went to this auction, okay, two to 3,000 people will show up, not to worry. Maximum I've ever seen, and you've heard the old rule, 80-20, maximum you'll ever see bidding at an auction will be 20% of the people in the room. That's a maximum, but it's usually about 90, 95, 5% of my bidders, the rest of them aren't. You get to $100,000 on your bidding, if you got money, tax auctions are where the place to be because they're... The, the people of money don't go there. They, now people don't want to work with their hands. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you go to Miami, you're going to go to a place like Miami. Everything on the list is going to be 500,000 and up. And so the bidding might start at 200,000. So all the little guys are, have to go to the outlining counties, but we teach them that we say, look, go here. Don't go to Miami. When you got a 40 million bucks, a half a million bucks in your account, Go there, you'll get a good deal. You'll, make, you'll buy a property for 40 cents on the dollar and make a lot of money. But you're not, you can't pe compete with big guys in any business when you're a little guy. You gotta, do the, you gotta do your homework and learn how to do it. Once you've done that, three deals, five deals on your belt, you can do this for the rest of your life. It's a part-time side hustle. It's not a full-time business. Part-time side hustle. 100%, and, and, it, and it really is so seasonal too at best. Like you don't yeah. have to spend your entire year getting prepared for it. You can spend probably 30 days to get ready for it and be ready to rock and roll. We look forward to August, every August, because I buy them in Mississippi. That's really the only state I buy them. And I bought some in New Orleans. We're actually, and just to kind of show you a real life example or show the audience who's listening to real life examples, how accurate Ted is and all this. We bought a, actually from a, uh, a tax lien broker, we bought a property in Louisiana for $3,000 in back taxes. And then we cobbled together those other interests. And now we're selling the property for $150,000. Okay. So, so we put a little bit of money into it, but we were in that deal to acquire it for $3,000. We didn't have to put more money into it, but we did because that's what we do. We fix things. And that property, now we're only going to get 96% of it. We're going to have to force that sale. But we get 96% of whatever we sell it for and the 4% will go back to the state, right? And so, I and the other thing that's really cool about this is if you buy a tax lien or a tax deed or a tax certificate and the person does redeem, if you're an investor, that's an opportunity for you to have a conversation with that person and say like, hey, I know you weren't able to pay your taxes. Chances are it's own free and clear. You know, is there a reason that you might want to consider selling it to me right now versus having to go through this again? So it's another foot in the door for people that are looking to find those situations and have those conversations with people. Plus, you're helping the government. You are helping the local government. You're paying yeah. the firefighters. You're paying the school teachers. You're paying the county employees. You're paying the local police. You're paying the, 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 the sheriff, the whole thing. All those people get paid from the county. Yeah, 100%. Ted, people, how, how do people follow you? Or do you have any social media or, or is it the website? Yeah, I, I, I have the website. Uh, I do um, uh, YouTube on a regular basis. Um, I have about three to three to 4,000 people a day watch me on, on YouTube. Uh, the people are, are, are come to us as a result of that. Um, the business, we don't, we don't need to be massive. The people that want to follow us, they, 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 they find the Ted Thomas because I've, I've been teaching people for 30 years the same thing. You probably learned from someone that I taught years ago. I was going to ask you. I was going to, I'll tell you who taught me. And I was going to yeah. ask you if they were one of your students. So a guy named Tom D'Agostino and Corey Taylor were the people that taught us from a okay, company. Well, Corey, Corey Taylor now works down with uh, Grant Cardone. 
And uh, at least he did last time I heard of it. Those guys are, that's a former military Marine guy. Yes, uh, 100%. Know, you know, Jack, okay. Um, he, has a, he has a magic map that was much more like mine that you taught people. Those guys know what they're doing. Okay. Here's what you did. It's the beauty of what you, you don't have to ever worry about it. You don't ever have to worry about a competitor. You're doing the hard part of the tax lien and D business. You're assembling things. You're going into markets where other people aren't. You have very few uh, competitors unless they're old timers. Your competitors is within the county. Your competitors come from there. You don't have 50 competitors coming from other places. When I buy, I have competitors in New York. I'll have competitors from Miami, from, from Montreal, from London, England. I'll have them from all over the place. You're working in local markets, a very sophisticated marketing. So those guys taught you right. Yeah, no, I, I thought they I, I thought they might have been from you just based on the way that the No, your, they, they, but they've been around. They've been around for 20 years. I, I remember when they started. Yeah, yeah. They was, been around they at a, least at least 20 years. I, I I think he's still doing it for I think he's working for Grant Cardone now, but maybe he's back working for I think he's got his own business. They they switched it. They're no longer iWealth. It was something else. But yeah, that's yeah. that's what taught me. And they actually uh we actually invested with them in a in a Rochester deal as well. And it's funny because we knew the broker from a lot of it's interesting. A, a lot of the brokers are out of Puerto Rico. A lot of these guys who broker these tax liens, they scoop up the extra things and then they'll resell them on the open market. They're out of uh, Puerto Rico is what I have found. A lot of these guys. Well, the reason for that is taxes. So, you know, it's a it's a, um, a territory. So you can you can go there and, and uh, you can live tax free if you're if you want. You know, so a lot of them live there. And now the way airplanes, when they're running and you're not having hurricanes and things, well, they can they can get anywhere they want, so they want to get in and around those big cities because the big cities will have they'll package because they don't want to take the time to do individual. They said so that packaging stuff. I'm trying to specialize in buying onesie, twosie, onesie, twosie because I'm teaching students. I have students that go in, in age from 45 to 105. They're wow. all older. Well, so they're you're, all people. So, great. so you're so you're a young guy. I am, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they so they got to have money. In other words, to be in this business, you're going to have to. Yeah, this isn't a business you get in for fifty bucks. Yeah. You need some money because uh, the auction is cash, you know, yeah. or, or an equivalent. You know, you got to give. So that the only negative is the little guy has got to go out and get his money together first, not hope to make it, you know, just on, you know, bootstrap it. You've got you got to have some money to buy at the auction. But once yeah, you know how to do it, they don't care how you got the cash as long as you got it. So if you got cash, yeah. they'll take it. They don't care yeah. how you got it. And the other yeah. thing about that is, um, a lot of these, a lot of these, what I've noticed in Mississippi is they make it hard for outsiders to get in. They say, "Oh, you got to come register in person," and they won't let you register even if even if they're doing the the auction on GovEase, which a lot of these uh, municipalities are using now. They'll say, "No, no, no, you got to come in in person and register," because they don't want outsiders. A lot of them that they don't right. want. Outsiders. Right. They'll have to change that, though. They're not going to have any choices soon. Yeah. Anyway, so that's good. So, well, I so, appreciate you coming on the show and dropping all this game. I really learned a lot. Um, Ted, you've got you. a lot of energy. I appreciate you being flexible with your schedule today. Guys, if you're listening to Ted Thomas right now, he's dropping 100% game. I back what he's saying. I don't say that often. I can tell you he knows what he's talking about. He's giving good advice. He's not saying go all in. He's saying be conservative. You need to have real cash. And do your homework and do your research. And, you know, he never said it's easy, but it's 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 very simple. And if you can do something that's very simple and you do your research, you could get come up r really quickly. And it's a great way to make money. And I, I couldn't agree more. And for 23 bucks, you get six hours. Six hours of what we just did. It goes at the same speed. Was Troy 50. Right. Troy 50. Troy 50. Go to his website, www.tedthomas.com. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's it. Go to www.tedthomas.com, enter in Troy50, get your 50% off, go check it out. It's worth the education at bare minimum, even if you do nothing about it. Exactly, exactly. 100%. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Ted. Um, okay. We'll definitely love to see you soon in the future and hear what you're up to. If you're ever interested in coming out to Kansas City and uh, teaching our students as well, I'd love to have you. Okay, we'll make a point of doing that. I love Kansas City. All right, brother, man. Well, I appreciate right. you, Ted. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace. What's up, everybody? My name is Troy Kearns, and I love the fact that you're listening to this video right now because I've got a great thing to share with you. I've got the 
best podcast you're ever going to listen to. You've definitely got to check it out and give me your feedback. All you got to do is comment the word podcast and I'll link you to it right now. So comment the word podcast right down below and I'm going to link you to it. Check out one of our episodes. We're up to 150 episodes, all with entrepreneurs, businessmen, businesswomen, digital marketers, and politicians. People that you can learn from, people that I am learning from. Why do you think I'm having these amazing guests on myself? I'm trying to learn from them. So you're definitely going to learn something from all of these people. Hope to see you there soon. Peace.